In this short video, we're going to talk about the matrix exponential. So let's think about this for a minute. If you just have a single linear differential equation, say y prime equals ay, we know the solution has the form y equals c times e raised to the power of at. Now, It would be nice if for a system of differential equations, so we have capital X prime equals AX, we would expect a solution of the form X equals E to the power of AT times some constant vector. So bear in mind that E raised to the power of AT is actually a matrix. And I see that I probably want an arrow on top of my x, indicating that it is a vector. So that sounds all good and well, but what is a sensible definition of e raised to the power of a t? Well, let's think back to our Taylor series for just a, a regular scalar t. Um, so e to the at is just uh, 1 plus at plus quantity at squared over 2 factorial plus quantity at cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. And so we could just replace the scalar a, or the number a, with the matrix a. And we'd have to replace the number 1 with the identity matrix, but otherwise the series would still be the same. So I would have i plus a times t plus a squared t squared over 2 factorial plus a cubed t cubed over 3 factorial, and so on. In fact, we could write that in summation notation as sum k equals 0 to infinity a to the power of k t to the power of k over k factorial. So let's look at an example. This is a very simple example. Uh, normally, it's, it's a challenge to calculate e to the power of at. But here we have what we call a diagonal matrix. Diagonal matrix means on the diagonal, we have non-zero numbers. But everywhere off the diagonal, we have zero numbers. In fact, with a diagonal matrix, you could even have zeros on the diagonal. But everything that's not on the diagonal has to be zero. These are very nice matrices to work with. They act essentially the same way as numbers do with multiple components. So for example, a squared is what we'd like to see. If you do the matrix matrix multiplication, you're going to get 4 and 9. So in other words, all you had to do was square the diagonal entries. And then a cubed, again, if you do the matrix matrix multiplication, uh, you're going to get on the diagonal, 8 and 27, which is exactly 2 cubed and 3 cubed. So for this diagonal matrix, you get a very nice pattern. a to the power of k is 2 to the power of k on the diagonal, and 3 to the power of k on the diagonal. And off diagonal, it's still 0. And so that means e to the a to t would be the uh, diagonal matrix and the 1, 1 is going to be the sum k equals 0 to infinity of 2t to the power of k over k factorial. And the 2, 2 diagonal is going to be the sum k equals 0 to infinity of the quantity 3t to the power of k over k factorial. And so that would just be e to the power of 2t in the 1, 1 diagonal and e to the power of 3t in the 2, 2 diagonal. And so I want to caution you that this is a very simple case because we have a diagonal matrix. That's the only reason why we have this nice pattern. In general, a to the power of k does not have any simple pattern that we can determine. So let's take a look at the derivative. So we have a formula here for the uh, 
function e to the a t. So let's go ahead and take its derivative with respect to t. So we'll just take it term-wise. We've got a power series. And so the derivative of i, that's a constant, so that'll be 0. Derivative of a t is just going to be a. The derivative of a squared t squared over 2 factorial, we'll use the power rule on t. Right? We're taking the derivative with respect to t. So that would be 2 a squared t over 2 factorials. And the 2's divide out, so I'm just left with a squared t. When t cubed, I'll take uh, use the power rule. So 3 times a cubed times t squared over 3 factorial. So the 3 will divide out. I'll be left with 2 factorial in the denominator and a cubed t squared. And let's just look at one more term to make sure we can see the pattern. When I apply the power rule to t to the power of 4, I'll have 4 a to the power of 4 t cubed over 4 factorial. And again, the 4 is going to divide out, so I'm going to be left with 3 factorial. So I'll have the smaller power of t and the smaller factorial in the denominator. Now, if I factor out a from that series, then what's inside the brackets will be i plus a times t plus a squared t squared over 2 factorial plus a cubed t cubed over 3 factorial and so on. And that is exactly our power series representation of e to the a t. So the derivative of e to the a t is just a times e to the a t. So that's exactly what we'd expect if we had just a regular uh, exponential function of a single variable. All right an exponential function where the constant, we have a constant times t. So this e to the a t, we're going to call that c for the moment. So uppercase c, that's a Greek letter. And this c is a fundamental matrix. Remember, a fundamental matrix is a matrix which satisfies the differential equation. And so this one will satisfy it, since c prime equals a times c. And also, if I look at the determinant uh, of this matrix, uh, when t equals 0, well, that would be the determinant of e to the a times 0, which means that if I go back a couple slides here, our definition. That means all of the terms except for the identity matrix will be 0 when t equals 0. And so the determinant of c of 0 is just the determinant of the identity matrix, which is 1, which is not 0, which means that, of course, this is an invertible matrix. This matrix is invertible. All right, so uh, again, calculating in general, uh, without using technology, calculating the matrix exponential is challenging. But at least for small matrices, we can use Laplace transforms. So uh, we're going to say x of t. And I didn't put an arrow on this uppercase x, because this is a matrix. It's not just a vector. It's a matrix. e to the power of at is going to give you a matrix which has the same number of rows and columns as the matrix a. So this uppercase x represents a matrix. And it is a solution to uh, the initial value problem, where we have x prime equals a x, and x of 0 is the identity matrix. And now we're going to do kind of the reverse in notation of what we've done in the past. Uh, now our function of t is represented by an uppercase letter. And so its Laplace transform is going to be represented by the corresponding lowercase letter. So we're going to use lowercase x of s to represent the Laplace transform of e to the power of a t. And so let's take our differential equation and take the Laplace transform of each side. So the formula for the derivative still applies even when you're working with matrices. And also notice that this 
Laplace transform, lowercase x of s, would also be a matrix of the same order as A. And go ahead and collect the terms that have uh, an x to the s. And we're going to go ahead and factor out, not x to the x, x of s. And let's factor out that lowercase x. We'll replace uh, x of 0 with the identity matrix. And then we can solve this matrix equation by multiplying on the left by the inverse of the i times s minus a. And so uh, now I have an expression for the Laplace transform. I'd have to calculate the inverse of this matrix. So the identity matrix times s and then subtract off the matrix a take its inverse, that gives me the Laplace transform. But what we're really interested in is defining the uh, e to the at, so the matrix exponential, that would be the inverse Laplace transform then of that inverse of i times s minus a. So there's still a lot of work that's to be done here. We would have to uh, calculate the inverse of i times s minus a. Once we've calculated the inverse, then we have to calculate the inverse Laplace transform of each of the entries of a. So let's see how we could do that in a simple 2 by 2 example. So we're going to try to calculate e to the power of a t, and a is the 2 by 2 matrix with entries 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2. All right, so I need to first calculate i times s minus a. So remember, the identity matrix just has 1, 0, 0, 1. So I get s minus 1, 1, negative 2, and s plus 2 as the matrix. And now we'll use the formula to calculate the inverse of that matrix. Remember, the formula says we have to have first 1 over the determinant. So I have taken the product of the diagonals subtracted the product of the off diagonals. And then I swap the diagonal entries. So now I have s plus 2 in the 1, 1 position and s minus 1 in the 2, 2 position and change the sign of the off diagonals. So now I have negative 1 and positive 2 as my off diagonals. So we'll do a little bit of algebra here. Uh, after using FOIL, I can see that the negative 2 and the positive 2 will add to make 0. So now I have 1 over s squared plus s times the diagonal where we've swapped, I mean, times the matrix where we've swapped the diagonals and changed the sign of the off diagonals. And I'll bring that inside the matrix, the 1 over s squared plus s, that multiplier. I'll multiply that times every entry. And then I would need to use the partial fractions decomposition of all of the four terms individually. And now I'm ready to take the inverse Laplace transform of that entire matrix, which means just doing it, taking the inverse Laplace transform of each one of these entries. So it's not very difficult here. Here I have multiples of 1 over s. Remember the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s is just 1. And then the other form I have is a multiple of 1 over s plus 1. So the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1 is e to the negative t. And so now I find that the inverse Laplace transform, or the matrix exponential for the matrix 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, and I should have a t on here. Let me go ahead and put a t so that we're not... There is a t. There we go. It's going to be 2 minus e to the negative t, negative 1 plus e to the negative t, and then 2 minus 2, e to the negative t, and negative 1 plus 2, e to the negative t. And just as a quick check, we can verify if I put in t equals 0, 
I should get the identity matrix. So here I'll have 2 minus 1, which is 1. That's what I want. Negative 1 plus 1 gives me 0. Neg I mean, positive 2 minus 2 gives me 0. And then negative 1 plus 2 gives me 1. So that was just a quick check.